This is part 94 of SQL Server tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss how to set the execution order of triggers. One thing to keep in mind is that the service scope triggers will always fire before any of the database scope triggers. This cannot be changed. Let's actually prove this with an example. Here, we've got two triggers. The first trigger is scoped to the database and this trigger will fire in response to create table event. And if you look at what this trigger is doing, it's simply printing this message database scope trigger. The second trigger right here is scoped to the server and this trigger will also fire in response to the same event that is create table. And this trigger is printing a message saying server scope trigger. So let's create these two triggers. At the moment, we've got two triggers, one scoped at the database level and the other one at the server level, both of them firing in response to the same event that is create table. So now, if we go ahead and create a table, both of the triggers will be fired. And if you look at the order in which they are fired, server scope trigger is fired first and then the database scope trigger. So server scope triggers will always fire before any of the database scope triggers and that cannot be changed. However, we can use this system stored procedure sp underscore set trigger order to set the execution order of either server scoped or database scoped triggers. Meaning, if you have, let's say, five different server scoped triggers responding to the same event, then you can control which trigger is going to fire last or which trigger is going to fire first using this system stored procedure. And this pro procedure has got four parameters. The first one is trigger name, which specifies the name of the trigger. The second one is order. So the value for this parameter can be first, last, or none. If you set the value to none, then the trigger is fired in a random order. The third parameter is statement type, which specifies the SQL statement that fires the trigger. For DML triggers, it can be insert, update, delete, etc., or any DDL event. And the final parameter is namespace, which specifies the scope of a DDL trigger. For a database scoped trigger, the value will be database. For server scoped, the value will be server, otherwise null. And here we have an example of how to use this system stored procedure. So let's understand this with an example. Right here, we've got three database scoped triggers. Notice all of them are scoped to database. And if you look at the events for which they are responding, all of them will fire in response to the same three events, create table, alter table, and drop table. And if you look at what those triggers are doing, the third trigger here, that is database scope trigger three, is printing this message, database scope trigger three. Similarly, the second one is printing database scope trigger two, and the first one, database scope trigger one. And notice the order in which we are going to create them the third one first, second one second, and first one last, okay? The reason this order is important because by default, these triggers will fire in the order in which they are created. And we can change that default behavior using this system store procedure. So let's create these three triggers. Before we do that, let's actually delete the other triggers that we already have. So I'm going to first delete the database scoped one and then the server scoped one. Now let's create these three triggers. And now we already have this test table. So I'm going to drop it and these three triggers should still fire because you know we want them to respond to drop table event as well. So let's drop the test table and look at this. So the order in which they are executed is the order in which they are created. We created the third trigger first, and then the second trigger, and then the first trigger. And that's the order in which they are executed. That's the default behavior. Now, for some reason, if you want to change that execution order, then you can use this system stored procedure, sp underscore set trigger order. And here we have an example. So if you look at the first execute statement here, we are changing the execution order of database scope trigger one. We are setting the order for that one to fast uh, first, and the statement type is create table. So that's the DDL event for which we want this trigger to be executed first. And the namespace of this one is database. And similarly, uh, database scope trigger three, we want that to fire last. And again, for the same event, create table. 
and the scope is database. So let's go ahead and execute these two statements. Now let's create the table. So when I execute this, look at that. Database scope trigger one first and then database scope trigger two and then finally database scope trigger three. So the order that we have set using this system stored procedure is respected. However, if we drop the table, again those three triggers will fire and let's see what's the order in which they are going to fire. Look at this. Now the order is back to what it was, three to one. And that's because using this system stored procedure, we have only set the order for create table event. Now, if you want that same order for drop table, then you will have to set it again for that event using this system store procedure. Now, if you have a database scoped and a server scope trigger handling the same event, and if you have set the execution order at both the levels, that is both at the server level and at the database level, then here is the execution order of the triggers the server scope trigger marked first will be fired first and then the other server scope triggers and then the server scope trigger that's marked last and then the database scope triggers will start so the database scope trigger that's marked first will fire first and then the other database scope triggers and then finally the database scope trigger that is marked last thank you for listening and have a great day